A model steam engine test plant, part 17. Drilling and threading the exhaust inlet and outlet holes, then installing the required fittings. Soldering the fittings and the top cap in place, and soldering the drain pipe to the drain tap. Before beginning this part of the job, I need to thoroughly clean every area on the tank itself that needs to be soldered. And here I'm using a Scotch Bright pad to scour the inside. I'm going to use some of this again, it's called Fryer Lux Paint, and it's basically ground up lead in a zinc chloride flux. Usual health and safety warning don't drink it, don't eat it, don't breathe in any fumes. This part of the job might look a bit messy, and indeed it is, but it works, you'll have to trust me on this. I'm putting a generous amount of fryer looks around the inside edge of the top cap. When I finally solder the cap in place, the condenser will be upside down. So the solder and flux mixture will flow into the joint all around the edge. Before I can do that, I have to drill a couple of holes in the tank. To make sure the hole is in the right place, I'm using a set square and scribing the position on the side of the tank. I made marks on the tank in the right position at both sides and here I'm at the drilling machine drilling the holes. The holes need to be tapping size for 5 30 seconds of an inch threads. And because I'm using PM Research fittings, I'm going to have to use different size threads on both sides. I had a look on PM Research's website and the threads for these pipes that I'm using are 27 threads per inch. Here I'm drilling the hole at the other side. I've just shown a clip where I'm using a steel rule to make doubly sure that I'm drilling the hole in the correct place. The holes are both drilled, now I'm going to turn my attention to re-threading the PM Research elbows. I've never used a 27 threads per inch tap. I've used plenty of 26 threads and plenty of 28 threads per inch. So I'm modifying the PM Research elbows as usual. I'm using a tapping size drill for 5 16 by 26 threads per inch. And here, with the part still in the drilling machine, I'm threading it. This is a bit repetitive because I had to do both sides. Here I've turned the part around in the machine vise. I've paused the video just so you can see that almost all of the original threads have now disappeared. This tapping size drill for 5 16 by 26 is 9 30 seconds of an inch. Once again, as before, I'm threading this side of the elbow, 5 16 by 26 threads per inch. This is not a difficult job in any way. Once I'd threaded both sides of one PM Research elbow, I did the same to another. Because for this job, I need two PM Research elbows. Then I threaded one of the holes in the tank, and using this small Proxon angle grinder fitted with a flapper wheel, I deburred the hole. The next part of the job involves the use of more Frylux paint. I'm applying this stuff both to the hole in the tank and to the fitting that I'm going to solder in there. It might look a bit messy, but once it's soldered, it won't be quite as bad. Once again, I'm using far too much because I do want it to run down inside the tank. One side done, now I'm threading the other side, 5 16 by 32 threads per inch for a standard British commercial union. And once again, I coat the area around the hole as well as the fitting itself before I screw it into position and tighten it up with a spanner. A Barco spanner, as usual. By the way, I am not sponsored by Barco in any way. I mention their name frequently because their products are very good. Everything is now ready to be soldered, but this job needs to take place in the outer part of the workshop with everything upside down. Because this is a large tank, it takes a good while before it gets hot enough to melt the solder. But I'm being very careful not to overheat the tank. Too much heat is not good if you're soft soldering. The idea of using too much solder, as you can see, works very well. It's run out underneath the tank and it's a good joint. I cleaned off the surplus solder and excess flux using a paintbrush dipped in water. And as you can see, it looks quite good. Here I'm showing the layout and the reason why I use these PM Research elbows. I'm also using PM Research brass piping, which is not quite the right thread, but it's tight enough for this application. Don't forget, this is not a pressure vessel. Here I'm tightening the elbows onto the end of the pipe and making sure that they are in the right position. Here you see the general arrangement. This is the exhaust pipe to the chimney. 
and I need to make a simple threaded fitting that fits in the chimney and directs the steam in an upwards direction. In this clip you can see the layout of the finished plant. Not much more to do now. I need to paint the condenser tank black and I need to make a lid for the water tank. The final job in this episode is fitting an extension pipe to the steam tap that fits in the condenser. I'm soldering a 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe into a 3 16 of an inch diameter hole that I've drilled in the end of the fitting. Belt and braces approach, I've used some fryer looks on the part and now I'm adding a little bit more solder which is standard electrical multicore solder. I'm touching the solder on the job high up on purpose it flows much better around the joint and doesn't blob in one position. In the same way as I did with the main tank, I used a paintbrush dipped in water to clean the joint. This clip shows the valve screwed in its final position. I used a shim washer of the right thickness to make sure that the outlet was facing backwards. That is it for this episode, there's not much more left to do. This boiler plant will be very useful to have in the workshop because it's not as big as my Castle V6 boiler, but it's big enough to power quite large engines. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.